So I just wanted to make a video on contest prep nutrition. Um, I've had a lot of interest in uh, people wanting to compete um, as fitness models, uh, doing physique, muscle model, bodybuilding, figure, all that stuff. Um, and that's really good and great and stuff. Um, but I want to ensure that people understand the importance of nutrition when it comes to contest prep or getting your body as lean as you can whilst maintaining as much muscle as you can, which is the ultimate goal, really. Um, so basically, um, we all want to be in shape, right? So just in general, we all want to train hard and eat pretty good. And for the most part, people will eat like 80% or 90% or even 70% good and still look great um, or still be happy with the way they look. However, when it comes to contest prep, uh, even if you currently look the best you've ever looked in your life or you're the leanest you've ever been, contest prep or getting on a bodybuilding or a fitness or a figure model stage is completely different. Um, the standard of that is much higher. Um, so basically what that means is your body fat has to be way lower. So, um, you know, I get people uh, ready for comps um, and they they may not stick to everything um, as well as they should because in their mind they look great already or they've improved a lot. But the difference between being your best and being able to compete with other people who are working their asses off to be their best um, is a different game. So basically, um, the importance of nutrition when it comes to contest prep is like at the highest, more important than what you do training-wise or cardio-wise or anything like that. And a quick example of that is um, you know, it might take you 30 minutes or 35 minutes to burn 300 calories on a treadmill if you choose to do cardio, right, for your fat loss. Um, eating three Tin Tams will destroy that, basically. So it's just like they're pretty much equal 300 calories or so in three Tin Tams. Um, and which one's harder, resisting three Tin Tams or doing 30 minutes or 35 minutes of cardio? Obviously, the cardio is going to be harder, therefore the nutrition is more important because if we can maintain optimal nutrition then we don't have to do so much exercise or we don't have to try to uh, you know damage control is what I call it try to fix your errors and stuff like that um, and then the, the cardio that you do will be uh, more beneficial because it will be catered towards fat loss more than trying to d fix what you've kind of stuffed up um, and I'm talking kind of fast because I want to make this video as short as I can because I don't want it to be super long and boring um, but basically, when it comes to nutrition for, for contest prep and for fat loss, um, calories will dictate whether you gain or lose weight. So that's the most important factor always. So basically, when it comes to contest prep, we need to be eating enough calories to support um, and maintain our lean muscle. Um, but we need to be eating less than we're, than we're burning. So we need to make sure that we're losing weight consistently um, over fortnightly or monthly or whatever, however long you have basically, even weekly you can track your weight and that would be ideal. Um, so we need to ensure that the calorie amount that we eat is consistent and it's going to be the same whether it's every day or every week, it's going to be the same total load of calories per week. Um, we need to make sure that's accurate and the only way to make sure that's accurate is to track your macros if you're doing flexible dieting or you're tracking macros or you like to you know, be, be flexible with your food choices or you need to follow a meal plan. Um, and if you're following a meal plan, um, and I experienced this today and that's why I'm making this video, if you're following a meal plan because you choose to follow a meal plan, um, because you want to take all the guesswork out and you don't want to think about it, you just want to do as you're told, if avocado is not on your meal plan, you're not eating avocado because it's not accounted for. Um, all the foods on your plan are measured and they equate to a certain amount of calories and if you eat those same foods every day with those measurements, your calories are going to be the same every day. And within those calories, the macros are going to be as they should be because, you know, your diet's been set up by someone who knows what they're doing. Um, so if you want to add avocado to your diet, that's going to affect your total calorie intake. Um, that might mean that you might be, if you're adding things, you might be not eating other things, which means there's errors there in your calorie intake. You might end up with lower protein than I want you to be eating or more fats or less carbs, things like that. And there's inconsistencies in your calorie intake or in your nutrition in general. So... If you don't get the result that I want you to get, or you want, or you want to get, or we expect you to get, then we have to make a change to your diet. But if you're not following your diet, how do we know what change to make, or how do we know what the cause was of not getting the results that we want? So, basically, following a meal plan, a set plan with foods that you like at the measurements that are required, which will result in the calorie amount that we need and the right amount of foods that will result in the right macros that we need, will be the most convenient, easiest option or um, pathway to go for contest prep. 
that way there's no um, inconsistencies in terms of um, sodium levels, in terms of um, measuring your food accurately, in terms of finding accurate nutrient data, stuff like that. So, and meal prep is simple because you're eating the same thing every day, so you can just cook it out for like three days or four days and you're done and you package it and everything's easy, right? That's like the conventional way of doing things. Now with tracking macros, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, you can mix foods up. You can have fun with it. I do it all the time. Everyone knows that, right? But I know um, the extent of the importance of being consistent, hitting your macros, having the right calories. And when it comes to tracking macros, sometimes um, you might put in sweet potato on my fitness pal, it will come up with like 20 different sweet potatoes. And how do you know which one's correct in terms of nutrient data? You might put in chicken and not realize that it's the, the nutrient information of cooked chicken breast rather than raw chicken breast, which is completely different. Um, you might put in protein powder and you might not realize that the uh, the one put in my fitness pal is not accurate to what the label says or it's something happened, right? So it's not correct or the calorie amounts might be off and that might confuse you a bit. Now, if you're like me, I would go to calorieking.com.au, which is a food database, and I would find the information there, make sure it's accurate, track it, or I'd eat foods with a nutritional panel, make sure that's accurate, track it. Um, I still eat similar foods every day, so there's less inconsistencies that way, or less variables that way as well. Um, so these are things you have to know. So yeah, I eat bun foods and stuff, and I fit that into my diet and whatever, um, and I mix foods up all the time, but I'm tracking everything consistently, and yes, I stuff up sometimes, even I do, and I've been doing it for like two years now. Um, so you have to understand that. So ideally, a meal plan is going to be best for you. And the way you could set that up would be, you could have a set meal plan for six days, and one day a week, the meal plan could be different. So that's, you know, a little bit of um, variety there and keeps you, keeps you happy and keeps you on point. Or you could do six days of meal plan, one day track your macros and just do whatever you want. Uh, but be consistent with that. Or you can, can track your macros a few days, stick to a meal plan some other days. Uh, but ideally, um, the number one best way to do contest prep and get the best results is to basically eat the same foods every day. And yes, that goes against flexible dieting and what I do and what I say. But if you want to get the results with the less, least amount of error, um, that's the best way to do it. If you're more advanced and you've been doing this for a while, then you know, track your macros and have fun with it and mix foods in and, you know, hit your macros as close as you can. But it's much easier for me to say, all right, you're following your diet, you're doing everything great, we want to push fat loss a little bit more, let's reduce this food by this much, and that's going to be it. And, you know, that that's a simple adjustment rather than saying, let's reduce this much carbs, and then you got to play around with your foods. Um, which, honestly, that's what I do. I prefer to do that because I've been doing this for a while and I prefer it and I love it. But I'm talking, I'm talking to everyone who wants to look their best, be their best, feel confident, feel great on stage, get the results they expect, um, but at the same time, want to have a meal plan, but ask me or ask other people or just assume that eating things that aren't on their plan would be okay. And, you know, I've had clients in the past who will half-ass it for like a couple of months, then realize that they really need to work harder, um, then they're super consistent and they get the results. And sometimes they're super consistent so late in the prep that we have to reduce their food more or they have to do more exercise and it's not ideal. So if people just do as they need to do uh, from the start, they're gonna get the best results, it's gonna be the easiest prep it can be. Um, I had a guy who wanted to compete in May and I told him he can't compete because he's not gonna be ready even though he thought he was the best, uh, in the best condition he's ever been, he wasn't at a condition uh, for contest prep and there was no way I was going to let him go on stage and let him be confident in his own environment then put him on stage and make him feel inadequate so I said no he's going to compete in September instead and uh, he's obviously working harder and being more consistent with his nutrition to get there so basically this video is just to reinforce the fact that nutrition is the most important aspect of uh, contest prep it's going to ensure that you're reducing fat it's going to ensure that you're maintaining muscle just as much as training will um, and it's going to ensure that you get to the point that you need to be at, whether it's 3%, 4% body fat, etc. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do flexible dieting. If you want to do flexible dieting, if you know how to do flexible dieting, if you know what it is, if you don't just think it's what people have told you, but you've actually researched it yourself and read books and, um, or you've seen me about it, do it. And, uh, I'll be tracking your, your, 
your food intake to make sure it's accurate and consistent and everything else like how to do for my clients or I'll be giving you a meal plan and you'll be following that perfectly and you're not going to stuff up at all. Um, and that's pretty much it on nutrition for contest prep. Um, so take remember that, like, you know, it's important to just be 100% consistent when you can because there will be some times where you can't, um, so be the best you can when you can, so then when you can't, you know, we can, we can handle that or we can work around those problems. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Good luck to everyone who's competing in September, October, November. Um, and in future.